Hey everybody, this week it's all about buffers. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, as always, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So for this week's video, we're gonna be looking at something that a lot of folks maybe don't have on their pedal board, but something that may be useful uh, for reasons that we'll talk about in a minute, and that is a buffer. A quick disclaimer, this video is definitely gonna go through the math of a buffer and why it's useful, proving that it's useful actually. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But the main thing you really need to know about a buffer is that it's taking the high output resistance from your guitar and it's actually going to change it to a lower output resistance. And again, for reasons we'll see when we do the math. So like I said, the easiest way to describe this is to look at the math and look at the schematics. So for that, we're gonna switch over to the computer and I'll try to describe how the math works out with and without a buffer. Okay, so the easiest way to talk about a buffer is to actually think about the buffer in a model, say. So as what we're looking at here on the screen isn't necessarily how a buffer looks when it's in your circuit, it's just a model. But there's three main characteristics of a buffer. Um, and this is an ideal buffer, so obviously we're gonna see some zeros and some infinities here. But uh, yeah, so we have uh, a input resistance on our buffer of infinity or very high input resistance. Uh, our output resistance is going to be very low, in this case, zero in the ideal model. Obviously in practice, it's not gonna be exactly zero. And then we're gonna have unity gain or gain of one. So basically the voltage that's dropped across the input resistance is going to be equal to the voltage dropped uh, across the output resistance here. If we think about A equals one, one times V in, zero resistance from our out, we're gonna get that same voltage over the output as we do the input. So a unity gain amplifier with zero output resistance and infinity input resistance. Now, if we think about our guitar, our guitar is essentially two components as well. Uh, I've got a model here basically showing that we have a small signal voltage. This would be created when we strum the strings over the pickups and then an output resistance of the guitar. Now, this output resistance is not necessarily the resistance measured um, of your pickups. It's very similar to it. Uh, there's a little bit more finagling that you have to do to actually get the output resistance of your guitar but they're usually between the five and 20K uh, commonly for single coils and humbuckers. Now, if we attach a pedal to our guitar, we're going to see that the output voltage of the pedal is actually going to be based on the interaction between the input resistance of the pedal and the output resistance of the guitar. It's actually a voltage divider, and that is represented by this equation here. So we have the voltage of our guitar multiplied by the input resistance of our pedal divided by the sum of the input resistance of the pedal and the output resistance of the guitar. Now in common practice, we'll just take some values here and say the output of our guitar is about 100 millivolts. The input for our pedal is about 10K, which is a reasonable assumption here and the output of our guitar is about 10K as well, which is again, a reasonable assumption. In this case, the voltage that our pedal will see is actually about half of what the guitar is putting out. So that's not really good if you're looking to keep fidelity of your signal. So how do we resolve that? Well, let's remove these equations here and this pedal, and let's throw a buffer into the mix. So now we have a buffer prior to the output signal getting into the pedal. So now we have to worry about what that V buffer is here. And that is going to be also a voltage divider between the input of the buffer, input resistance of the buffer and the output resistance of the guitar. So if we look at those same values, take something reasonable here, let's say the 100 millivolts again for the guitar, uh, input resistance of a buffer of one meg, which is definitely reasonable, and we'll keep that same 10K output resistance of the guitar. You can see here the math now works out that the uh, output of the buffer, or the voltage of the buffer there, is going to be 99 millivolts, which is approximately the voltage of your guitar. So that is here, the V buffer that's measured here, and then used again here. Now we need to take that a step further and then see what the pedal sees. So let's take this equation out and this equation out. 
and we'll say now that the pedal sees A, which is one times the voltage of the buffer, uh, times the input resistance of the pedal over the sum of the input resistance of the pedal and the output resistance of the buffer. Now, if we remember again, our A is equal to one, so we'll carry that 99 millivolts over from the V buffer from the previous equation. Uh, the input resistance of the pedal will take that the same as our very first example to be 10K. And the output resistance of the buffer, although you know ideally it is zero ohms, that's not uh, how many ohms it would be in practice. So let's just say it's 100 ohms. And then in this case, we're going to get 98 millivolts for the uh, output of the pedal, which again is pretty much what the guitar puts out. So you can see here how a buffer really helps maintain the fidelity of the signal from your guitar into the pedal. Moving right along, looking at a second application of a buffer, we're actually going to think about our patch cable. Now, if I just bring up this diagram of a patch cable, you're going to see that, you know, a patch cable has a conductor in the middle, and then it has a shield on the outside, and then essentially a dielectric as well in between the, the shield and the conductor. Well, even though it's a conductor, it does have some resistance. And because we have a shield, which is usually grounded and the conductor, we actually have a capacitor kind of by the foot when we create a, or when we use a patch cable. So there is some capacitance caused by your patch cable. And if you've actually seen this passive component structure here before where we have a resistor and then a capacitor to ground, you're going to notice that that is a low pass filter. So if we actually think about it as a patch cable being a low pass filter, we can assume for the most part that our um, resistance of our patch cable is approximately zero, but we can't negate the capacitance of the patch cable. So we actually have this here whenever we're using a patch cable, this would be kind of a, um, a sample or a model of a patch cable. So now let's remove this stuff here and add a guitar on the end. So now we have our guitar with its R out of 10K, what we usually say, and that is going through a low pass filter. So looking at that, we know that the cable creates a low pass filter. And the thing we need to think about here is the cutoff frequency. So the cutoff frequency is when your gain or essentially your output signal from your guitar actually starts to drop based on the frequency it's at. So the higher the frequency, the lower those or the more attenuated those uh, sounds are going to, to be by your low pass filter. And the cutoff frequency for this low pass filter would be one over two times pi times RC, where R is the sum of your patch cable resistance and your output guitar resistance. So if we consider this in a practical sense, uh, we'll just plug in some values here. Assume a 25 foot cable, R out of our guitar of 10K, which we've kind of been using all along. Uh, we won't take zero for the patch cable resistance, but we'll make it small, say 10 ohms. And then for a 25 foot cable, I think one nanofarad is, is pretty bang on for that. Um, if we plug that into our cutoff frequency calculation, we get a cutoff frequency of about 16 kilohertz. Um, that's not too concerning. 16 kilohertz is kind of the higher end of treble stuff, really only affects maybe cymbals, etc. cetera. Um, but you do have to remember this is a negative three dB cutoff frequency, meaning that by the time it hits 16 kilohertz, your signal's already been slightly attenuated um, for a while. So maybe even starting around 10 kilohertz. Um, the other thing to think about here too, is if the output on your guitar, output resistance on your guitar is double, say 20K, you know, cutoff frequency is gonna drop to eight kilohertz, or if you double the length of your cable, you're gonna double the capacitance. Similarly, you're going to get, uh, you know, eight kilohertz cutoff frequency and there you're definitely going to notice uh, some changes in your guitar signal, uh, at least with ver the very high end treble side of it. Uh, so basically, you know, you, you don't like this, you're kind of losing that treble fidelity. So let's take that off now and let's add in our buffer. So now we have a buffer in line 
prior to the patch cable. So essentially what we're thinking here is a short cable to a buffer and then run our long 25 foot cable uh, to our amp or to our pedals, etc. So again, our output guitar resistance is going to interact with our input buffer resistance to get V buffer. And then V buffer is going to uh, essentially interact with the output uh, resistance of the buffer and then the low pass filter caused by the patch cable. Looking at the second half of this circuit, you know, looking at the output of the buffer into the patch cable, we can also calculate a frequency cutoff when the buffer is in place. Uh, in this case, the cutoff frequency is going to be about 1.45 megahertz, which is well above anything that is going to affect your guitar signal. It's essentially a pass band. So yeah, by implementing that buffer, we're not going to attenuate any of those treble frequencies and we're going to maintain that uh, fidelity of the signal. Yeah. Now buffers do come in many different types. Uh, I will just show a couple up here right now. Uh, you'll see these a lot of the times on the input stages of uh, pedals. You'll also see them, uh, you know, just a straight up buffer. Uh, pedal will just have basically a simple maybe op amp in this case uh, But yeah, the just three examples here one with a JFET one with a BJT and one with an op amp All pretty simple designs again. You'll see them uh, very very often um, For the JFET you have your input on the gate the output on the source uh, For the BJT you're gonna have a input on the base output on the emitter so common collector and then the op amp, you're going to basically input on the positive node of your op amp, and then you're gonna tie the, the negative input to the output. So lastly, just before I finish off, I pulled up a couple of circuits here so we can take a look. Um, well, first one is the Klon. Uh, if you look at the Klon circuit, you, know, you do have an input buffer here. If you can remember back to the op amp buffer, uh, you do have the input on the positive terminal and then you've tied the negative terminal to the output. So this is an input buffer on the Klon. Uh, another common one is the Tube Screamer. Uh, tube Screamer actually is using a BJT as an input buffer here with Q1. And then also as an output buffer here with Q2. Uh, both BJTs, both input on the base, output on the emitter or common collector. Uh, BJT amplifiers. Uh, another one, like I mentioned, if you just want to make a simple JFET buffer, uh, there's lots of designs out there. Uh, TLO72 is a really easy one. Uh, Pedal PCB does provide just a little uh, board that you can do a JFET one. Just wanted to put this up here to show you that you can do it with a JFET as well. Uh, again, uh, input here, output here. Uh, pretty common, pretty easy buffer if you don't have one. So I hope you guys liked that conversation about buffers. I know it was pretty quick, but hopefully you guys learned something. You understand maybe why uh, a buffer may be needed for you. You probably have one in one of your pedals, especially the first one in your chain. So, you know, if you've got a, a pedal that's always on, it's got a buffer on the input, you probably don't need to worry about buying a specific buffer. If you want to build one, again, they're not very hard. Uh, I think you could probably build one with maybe three or four components. Uh, not too crazy, but yeah, uh, buffers are useful. Uh, they have its purpose. Don't neglect them. Uh, buffers can be great. So that's all for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the discussion. Remember to like, subscribe down below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.